Welcome to Operation Vagabond Falcon, Part 13. That was fast. Our bench seat is done. Looks kind of the same, doesn't it? Yeah, I told him. Nope, eh, the cover that's on it's just fine. Just fix what's inside. While I wait for the new spring perches to arrive. Oh yeah, that's right. Bruce's solution to the spring perch problem in the previous video is instead of just grinding off the old spring perches, which would take days, that's thick metal, is to just get new ones and put them right next to the old ones. Anyway, we'll get to that. This is an aftermarket electric wiper that's a direct bolt-in replacement to our vacuum-operated wipers. It's made by Newport Engineering, and it costs 220 dollars. Why? Because it's Newport Engineering and some other company that make a direct bolt-in replacement for a 1960 to 1962 Falcon, so you're gonna pay what they want. The first thing you do is remove this little flat arm gear thing at the end. That is what's going to slip directly into your wiper arms of the so-called wiper transmission. You get to keep all your internal hardware on a stock Falcon, it's just now an electric motor is going to drive everything. And that's really what you're paying for, the ease of installation. And by that I mean there could have been some extra instructions with this, because I try to bolt the entire assembly in and figure out it doesn't bolt in, you can't get to the other nut. It feels like it needs to be longer. But on the right, here is the new bolt, on the left is the old bolt, they're the same length. Oh, I get it, you're supposed to disassemble this thing. You're supposed to take the wiper motor off of the bracket and directly bolt the bracket to the inside of the car. I get it. No, wait, that doesn't work. Because I still can't get to the other bolt because the bulge of the motor comes around and I can't get a socket on it. I can't even get a wrench on it. Okay, I get it now. I take it apart. I put the one tough bolt through the bracket and then bolt the motor back onto the bracket out of the car and then bolt the entire thing onto the inside of the frame. The kit from Newport Engineering comes with a replacement knob. That's going to be your new wiper control knob. What I'd like is to put that knob directly where the old wiper knob was, and even maybe use the old kind of Bakelite hard plastic knob that's on the outside, so it looks like nothing's different. Man, that knob is hard to get off. Of course, it's a little Allen screw that goes in there. Can't get it out, and it's thin and it's tiny. Look at my Allen wrench bend. Okay, it finally breaks loose. But oh wait, this doesn't come out. Why doesn't it come out? I borrow Bruce's bore scope and start looking at it from way underneath the dash and realize that the wiper control module is press fitted into a bracket which directly connects it to your headlight switch. What? Yeah, the headlight slash dimmer switch is part of your the wiper switch. They're, they're a solid unit that goes across like that. Why did Ford make it this way? What problem does this solve? My only the only thing I can think of is that somehow this saved like eight seconds in the manufacture of the Falcon. Someone on the assembly line only had to reach into one box, maybe pull out both knobs things and, and put them in. So that doesn't come out. I, there, there's no grinder small enough to get in there to chop that bracket in two. You'd have to take the entire dash apart just to have enough working room to cut the end off that bracket to get that knob out of there. <sighs> All right, I guess I got to make a bracket and have this dumb knob hanging down below the dash somewhere. Hey, the next day. The new spring perches arrived. What we did is we got three inch spring perches, not three and a quarter. Why? Because a three inch spring perch for a 98 Explorer is seven bucks. And a three and a quarter inch spring perch is $40. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend a little time at the grinder and grind out three inches and make them three and a quarter. So we have to find the right angle for the pumpkin to sit. Because as you accelerate, and there's another person who made a video very good like this, explaining that as you accelerate the rear wheel drive solid axle car, as you accelerate your entire rear end bends. So the drive shaft moves. So you don't have the pumpkin and your connector for your drive shaft parallel to the road, it's tilted on an angle to make up for that twisting that's gonna happen. Once Bruce is satisfied that the level is good, he welds the spring perches on. Because an 8.8 .8 rear has a very large pumpkin, or some people call it the pig, take your pick, in the middle where all the gears lie, 
it's much bigger than the rinky dink what is it like a six inch six and a half inch rear end that's in a stock falcon you no longer can have this bumper at the top onto which the rear end would hit if you hit a big speed bump or a pothole or take your pick this can come out it's safe for this to come out because thankfully Ford provided two other bumpers on the ends of the unibody, which will protect the body in case you hit a bump. So we can do away with one. I mean, you could leave this thing on there, but if you did that, you'd have what, like a few inches of travel in the rear? It'd be kind of funny. Every time you hit a speed bump, people in the back seat would fly out of their seats like on a school bus. Nah, taking that out. The air hammer did a good job of ripping a hole in the bottom, so in a future video, I'll just show you a quick after clip of a little metal plate with some pop rivets in there. I figure if you want to watch a video of a guy putting pop rivets in, watch any 240 build. So now the spring plates can go on with the right U-bolts, but oh no. We have a problem. These plates are from a 1970 Mustang. Why did we use different plates? Because we have rear springs from a Falcon Sprint. Uh, the spring plates, the little hole on the end there, into which the shock will go, doesn't line up with the shock hole in the body the mount up there what are we gonna do we could bruce says well we can turn these things sideways that'll work but we don't have any metal left there's nowhere to redrill holes so we're stuck he says in the meantime grind off the edges of the old spring perches because the shocks are gonna hit them anyway so there's the rest of my day sitting grinding after a while i just started grinding with my eyes closed and i i, I just felt the grinder there like, I can feel if it's moving or not. I can feel if we're getting to the end. Grinding. People want to know what it's like building a classic car for the first time. Grinding. It's a lot, a lot of grinding. The next day, my spirits get a little bit better. Bruce has the solution. He tells me to go take the 1970 Mustang Spring plates there and get the what? Grinder. <laughs> and grind off all the powder coating that's on these things. Bruce then takes it to the bandsaw, which has a new blade on it, and cuts the end of the spring plate off, or the U-bolt plate. I keep forgetting the names of these things. He says, we're going to make them wider so we can mount them sideways. He sends me on an errand to go pick up some steel from a steel place next door, you know, a welding shop, and sets to welding that 1 8 inch thick steel plate onto the bottom of the spring plate, thus making a wider mounting surface into which the U-bolts can go. I saw some posts on the Ford Falcon owners group on Facebook about people who did this who had an 8.8 .8 rear. What they did is they kept the mounting plates from a 1998 Explorer or, or whatever Explorer they were using, but that required a whole nother adapter kit for the right kind of shocks. I didn't see a beginning and an after explanation of how they did it or what angle it ended up being. Who knows? Bruce throughout all this is very calm. He just says, well, you're building a custom car and this is what you do. You set fire to things. <laughs> That's all the powder coating just burning because you, you're putting a welder to it. No big deal. Blow it off and more welding. There we go. Wide spring plates, bolt plates, with a roll of dimes there. It's my job to drill new holes. I want a drill press in my life. Drill through anything's with one of these things. You should see the size of, you should see the motor that sits on top of this. Devilish. New holes drilled, paint them black, wait for them to dry. Yeah, that's close enough. Gummy, I can do gummy. Put it on, whatever, it's caliper paint. The shocks we're gonna use are gas adjust. That doesn't mean you adjust it. It just means it's kind of like a, perf kind of like a progressive shock. I don't know, look it up. Bruce says they're good. Good enough for Bruce, good enough for me. Now we trim off the excess. Don't really need U-bolts going down that far. More grinding. And you torque them down. These are half inch bolts, so you're gonna torque them down in stages. First, 35 foot pounds, and then 55 foot pounds. Morale's getting higher, it's the next day. Now there's brakes on. We're using the stock calipers from a 1998 Explorer with new rubber boots in there, re-lubed, repainted. Black. I, I spent a little bit of time at Advanced Auto Parts looking at the red caliper paint and almost reaching for the red caliper paint. Nope, got black set. I'm not doing that. They're going to be solid wheels on these this anyway. So on they go. Next time on Operation Vagabond Falcon, we start doing something with the steering. I didn't film it yet. Also, after this video ended, we took measurements for the type of... 
ire. No, we didn't. We took measurements for the kind of wheels we're going to need. And the front and rear are going to be different uh, because the rear end of a Falcon has a half-skirted wheel arch. And it's not flared, which is weird because the front wheel arches are flared, but the rears aren't. In fact, the rears curve in a little bit. So we can't have the same kind of wheel on the front that we have on the back. Also, Bruce doesn't really want to roll these fenders. They're too good to roll and it would mess up the look of the car, and I agree with that. So that limits us to a six-inch wide wheel. Interesting. Uh, originally, I wanted eight-inch wheels. Thought that would that look, that, that's kind of fat. He thought, all right, we can test that. And he says, no, eight, eight's not going to fit. I said, well, we could go seven. And we measure for seven, and it's like seven is already tight, and then your tire is going to bow out. We got to go six if we're going to keep this thing looking like a stock Falcon and not getting all hot rod with it. Uh, so that means a uh, 302 motor making about 250 horsepower is going to go down to six inch wide wheels. Could get a little bit hairy, especially because what's the ratio of this rear end? 373. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the front wheels are going to have an inner diameter of 15. We're not going to go wide, tall wheels. We want to have a lot of rubber on here to make it smooth and nice. So it's going to be a 15-inch wheel. Width of 6 inches. Our bolt pattern is Ford Standard, which is uh, 5 by 4.5. So 5 lug, and the spacing is 4.5 inches. The front wheels are going to have a back spacing of 4 inches, or offset of 3 inches. And the lip needs to be small. The lip can only be a half inch. Now the rear. The rear will have a diameter of 15 inches, a width of 6 inches. Bolt pattern's the same, 5 by 4, 5. Back spacing of 5 an offset of two, again with a half inch lip. So that's where we are with these. Wheel Ventiques has agreed to be another sponsor. So hopefully we can get some word from them about what sort of options they have and what can be done. So I'm excited about that. I always kind of poo-pooed the idea of wheels. I, I, originally, I didn't understand people who got excited about wheels. But here I am getting excited about wheels. I thought it was too bourgeoisie, you know, eh, dubs and all that. But then once you get to choose wheels, suddenly it's very, very interesting. Okay, next time on Vagabond and Falcon, it's going to be something about wheels and something about getting the steering hooked up. Thanks. Have a good week.